then there's Bobby Blair, baby boomer, Vietnam vet, retired Holliston mailman after 37 years, manager of Holliston's American Legion downtown Marigold Project, mayor of Mudville, owner of the mayor's Dahlia Plantation, co-writer and writer of the Holliston Reporter. And then recently, uh, he was honored, and there were a few more words that I can add uh, that were written by some of our local politicians. Uh, in, he was being toasted or, and roasted, I think, there um, in Holliston at an annual St. Patty's political breakfast. Um, and he was honored by uh, State Representative Carolyn Dykema, as well as uh, Senator Karen Spilka. And these are the words uh, that Carolyn Dykema put together to roast and toast Bobby Blair. All right with you? Yes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and she, she sang them. So she mixed a little music and uh, poetry and uh, a guitar that she plucked once in a while. So for a little levity in this introduction, come and listen to a story about a mayor named Blair. Okay, this is to uh, the Beverly Hillbillies kind of tune also. <laughs> but I, you can imagine that. I will read it for you this time. <laughs> a real towny guy in the Mudfill area. He's got an Irish wit that's indeed quite dry, and through to the core, he's a Holliston guy. The mayor, that is, flip-flops, flower pots. Well, the next thing you know, old Bob's a journalist, sort of like the news, but with a local twist. He got hot tips from the scanner all day, but in the interview, it's always, what do you say? The mayor, that is, he's the man, the big white van. Each and every year, Bob's a champion of the vets standing up there on the town hall steps. Marsden's at the mic, and he goes for more than 10 under Bob's breath. You hear, gah, he's long again. Okay, that's a personal joke. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the mayor, that is, cameraman, watering can. He's got a cute pad in the heart of the hood next to the spot where the famous Casey stood, and cans out front are the Dahlia's delight. Pick up a bunch and get lucky tonight. The mayor, that is, sortin' mail, tellin' tales. He's one of a kind. His type is pretty rare. He's a local icon, even got his own square. We heap on the praise, because it certainly is dues, but what he really needs is a real pair of shoes. <laughs> the mayor, that is, locally grown, Hollis his own. Come on back now, you're here. And um, I, I do know also that he is the one who honors uh, the veterans who have passed away uh, on Memorial Day and Veterans Day and put signs of the names um, from all over the world up around in the community for remembrance and also plants a field in Holliston of thousands of dahlias to make the world a little more beautiful too. So he is here to share his stories for the next 20 minutes with you. So get ready to go for a ride with Mayor of Mudville, Bobby Blair. <laughs> Thank you. So would you like the podium or no. take it away? All right. Fine. Okay. And we'll just move this up a little bit. Great. Thanks, Cheryl, for inviting me. I have to learn the word no. I, ha I haven't learned that yet. And, uh, you know. Um, How many people on? We got a little bit of an older crowd here. How many people aren't on Facebook? <laughs> a whole bunch. Uh, you know, there was a thing on there recently, and uh, you know, I look at it and I, I love humor. And uh, you know, there's been too much political stuff on there. I've been, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that person, this person. But there was one on there about a fellow that uh, jumped in his time machine and he went back a hundred years and he jumped out and there was a guy from 1917 standing there and he says, uh, what's that machine? Well, that's my time machine. He says, well, what year are you from? He says, 2017. And he says, well, 
what's new in 2017? We're stuck here in 1917. And he says, well, we have all kinds of new things. I brought one with me. He says, uh, it's my cell phone. And he says, well, what do you do with that? And he says, well, he says, it also includes this thing that's, it's really a computer. You don't know about computers yet. And the fellow says, well, what do you do with them? And he says, well, mostly I just look on it and look at pictures of cats. <laughs> <coughs> and also I, I like to argue with people that I don't know. <laughs> As Cheryl told you a few things about me, um, you know, it wasn't later, until later in life, that I learned to use a computer. And that's because uh, the middle portion of my life, uh, I liked my beer, and uh, later on my Irish whiskey, Jameson, uh, more than I was into learning. And uh, she mentioned about St. Patrick's Day being yesterday, which is kind of special to me because uh, we buried my mom uh, five years ago on St. Patrick's Day, and my mom is the Irish side of the family. Uh, <clears throat> we kind of had, I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, kind of like the orange and the green. My father was Protestant. Uh, my mother was Catholic, and uh, back when they were married, uh, just after World War II, it was still kind of like taboo that, you know, uh, you marry a Protestant and, and whatnot. Uh, times have changed, obviously. And uh, the, I, I always kind of went to the Irish side. Uh, <coughs> you know, we used to have to go to Mass, and we would always say, how come Dad doesn't have to go to church? You know, we couldn't really understand that. It was our way of trying to get on dad's side so we didn't have to go to church. And uh, St. Patrick's Day, uh, for 12 years, I uh, actually owned a house in, in Ireland. And uh, people would say, well, how, how do you like buy a house in Ireland? Well, as I said, it was the drinking days. And uh, there was a band from town, uh, and they were going over on a tour of Ireland. Uh, in order for them to get their free flights, if they get so many people to go, uh, you know, their ticket was free. So <clears throat> it was like a big party, and over we went. I did that twice, and I, I got the idea. Uh, this band leader was having a house built there, and I, it, times were cheap then. You know, uh, the parity of the dollar was one to one. Um, so I ended up... Uh, buying a house. It was an old Garda station, uh, three miles out from the village where everybody else uh, was having a house built. And uh, it was an old police station. And, uh, you know, I fit right in there. And uh, I would actually go three times a year back to Ireland. And I, I don't want to say I got to be one of the locals, but, you know, when I would go back every time, and, of course, go to the pub. As I said, it was my drinking years. Uh, someone would obviously come up and say, Ah, oh, Jesus, where you been now? <laughs> and I says, I Did I not see you last week? And I says, You haven't seen me for three months. Um, you know, back to the, the theme of uh, computers and all. Uh, <coughs> you know, once I learned how to use a computer, you know. Uh, we thought it would be a good idea uh, to give mom and dad a computer and a, and a lesson. Uh, it didn't go over too well. Uh, my kid brother actually brought his down. He was still living at home. He brought his uh, downstairs for mom and dad. So I would go up and I'd say, geez, Ma, how you doing the computer? And she said, oh, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, no way. And I says, well, tell me how you're using it. And she says, well, you know, every time I want a recipe or something, I tell your brother to look it up, and he, pr <laughs> he prints it out for me. I go, well, Ma, that's not really using the computer. And she says, well, I don't really 
I don't really need it. She says, your sister tells me everything that's going on on Facebook. <laughs> I says, Ma, that's Facebook. Um, so mom, she didn't bother with it much. My father, uh, during his lifetime, he was a repair machinist, and he always had this curiosity. And I thought, geez, dad will take right to it. Uh, dad was by then in his 90s. And uh, so I says, Dad, how you doing on the uh, computer? And he says, well, uh, shake his head. I finally says, oh, tell me, something wrong with the computer? Yeah, he says, uh, come in here, I'll show you. It's broke. <laughs> <coughs> I says, well, what's broke about it, Dad? And he says, that thing right there. I says, the mouse? And he goes, yeah, it's broke. And I says, what's broke about it? He says, the middle button doesn't work. And I says, Dad, it's right click, left click. There is no middle button. It's a piece of plastic that you're trying to push on. The oh, he went and sat down and really never went back and tried it. So my mother, <coughs> in all her wisdom, decided that it was too far a walk from the living room to the den so she would get dad a laptop. That way he wouldn't have to get up and walk. And I says, mom, that's really not gonna work because if he doesn't get the fundamentals out there, it's not gonna help him sitting down. Well, I get the laptop. My kid brother gave dad a few lessons, but he got frustrated. And I happened to be up there one day and I see him looking over the top of the laptop and he says can I ask you a question and I go sure dad he says um, how do you get Peter Rabbit off these things <laughs> I says Peter Rabbit he says, come over here he says look sure enough I walked around and there's Peter Rabbit he had hit an ad or something and up came and he didn't know how to delete out of that so I sat down again, and Dad was hard of hearing. Uh, he wouldn't ear his, <coughs> wear his little piece like I have here. And uh, he says, can I ask you another question? And I says, sure. He says, uh, can these things talk? And I says, well, um, Dad, why are you asking me that question? He says. Well, I keep hearing the thing talk to me. I didn't know if I should try to answer it back. <laughs> I go, no, Dad, uh, in a later lesson, we'll teach you how to Skype and everything. Forget it. <coughs> you know, I think we all have coincidences in our life. Uh, sometimes the big, sometimes the small. You know, you'll go to the grocery store and you'll see someone and say, Wow, I was just thinking of you, you know. <coughs> I've had a number of them. And I'll give you a few instances. Uh, you know, when I was in the Army, uh, I was down in Fort Dix, New Jersey, and after the fourth week, they let you go out for a beer. It's not a, a real beer. They call it 3.2, so there's not much alcohol in it. But the base is so big that you have to take a taxi across the base to get to the beer hall. And I had gotten the taxi, the taxi made a stop, and the guy jumps in. And I said, geez, he looks familiar. And uh, finally I says, uh, geez, you look familiar. Uh, I says, uh, where are you from? He says, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I says, well, I'm probably mistaken. He says, where are you from? And I says, uh, Holliston, Mass. And he says, I used to live there. And I says, you're not Dickie Carpenter, are you? And he says, yeah, how'd you know? I says, you sat in front of me in Miss Pond's class in first grade. <laughs> you know, I suppose when you're talking about Quince, we were both the same age, both draft age, no big deal. Years later, uh, well, uh, not too much later, uh, I was in Vietnam, and uh, you were able to take a one-week uh, out-of-country 
little vacation and a three-day in-country. I had a friend who was up in Da Nang. I was in Play Coup at the time, so I flew up, and uh, the village was off limits because of enemy activity, but we were able to go to uh, China Beach. Um, so we went down there in a little club, very small. Uh, the infantry troops came in. Uh, there was only one seat left at the table we were at, and some guy says, geez, do you mind if I sit down? No, nah, go ahead, sit down. And uh, we get talking, he says, so, where are you guys from? I said, believe it or not, we're from the same hometown, uh, Holliston, Mass. He says, wow, he says, the guy that sleeps above me is from Holliston, Mass. His name is Richard Hart. And I says, geez, I says, I graduated with Richard. So once again, we're all about the same age. Coincidence. I uh, had that house in Ireland, and when I used to go, um, when you leave Boston during the evening and get in Ireland the next day, well, it's only a five-hour flight, but it's the next day. And uh, my neighbor, Parik Kelly, used to meet me in the village every time because we'd have a drink and another drink, and uh, he wasn't there that day. So <laughs> I couldn't imagine where he had been. And someone says, oh, he was here yesterday waiting for you. So he got his days mixed up. So I went on a search of the countryside for Park, and uh, I thought he was at the uh, sheep festival that they have. Finally, I went to a local neighborhood bar. I mean, it's off the beaten path. It was called The Traveler's Inn, owned by Michael Fahey. And uh, it wasn't an, an inn at all. It was a little pub round to the back of the building. And in the front was this little tiny grocery store. And uh, they sold bread, milk, the newspaper. And that's about it. And I went into the back sat down and was talking with the girl. Uh, she was the bartender, and she could walk out the door into the little grocery. And uh, we were laughing and joking, and Park wasn't there. And uh, she said, just a moment, I have a customer out front. She walked out front. A little while later, a woman walked in the back of the pub door. Uh, you had to be a local to know to walk in the... And she looks at me and she says, Bobby Blair? And I go, yeah. Uh, she says, uh, don't you know me? <laughs> I was there without my wife at the time uh, and all kinds of things are going through my head. And uh, I says, no, I don't. And she says, uh, Skyview Terrace. I says, like in Holliston, Mass? She goes, yeah. I'm trying to figure out who this person is. So I says, 13 Cludia, 15 Flynn, 17 Cashman. See, I'm a mailman. I remember all the numbers. <laughs> 21 El Hella, 23 Cassidy, 25 Janot. <coughs> I says, you're not one of the little Flynn kids, are you? She says, yeah. I says, what in heaven's name are you doing here? She says, well, I came to Ireland uh, two years ago with my aunt. I met an Irishman. Uh, we exchanged letters back and forth. She says, we got married. She says, and we had a baby. She says, <coughs> and we brought the baby back to meet my mother and father-in-law, and they happened to live right across the street from here. She says... I came over because we're leaving for the airport uh, to say goodbye to Michelle here, she says, and I heard your laughter. She says, there's only one person in the world that has a laugh like you. Well, her father happened to be a mailman, and he worked in Wellesley Hills, and he had Saturdays off, and I didn't, and during the summertime, he'd always have a beer for me on Saturday afternoon. And I would sit on the porch, and she remembered my laugh. Uh, so funny coincidences. I had one more 
that uh, I went down to the dedication of the Vietnam Veterans Monument. I think it was in 1982, I'm not sure. And uh, went down with a bunch of guys from the American Legion Hollison. We took a Winnebago. Uh, they had a parade that went by state alphabetically. And we all formed up at the Washington Monument. And one of the guys says, geez, instead of waiting here for our turn, why don't we go down and watch as Alabama or Alaska or Arkansas comes along? <coughs> so we did. And along came Massachusetts. Uh, to my surprise, uh, there was South Boston leading the Massachusetts contingent with all three-piece suits on, if you can believe that or not. <laughs> the rest of Massachusetts looked like uh, ragtag. Uh, so we jumped in, and uh, we went along a bit, and there was hardly any spectators there. Uh, but uh, the parade stopped, and it would start again and stop. And I looked over, and there was one solitary man standing over to the side, and I says, geez, he looks familiar. You know, I have this thing like running into people. And one of the guys says, well, why don't you go over and introduce you? I says, nah, it couldn't be. I says, hold on, let me see if he takes a step or two, and then I'll know. So he did. And I walked over, and I says, hi. I says, I think I know you. And he says, uh, I says, where are you from? He says, Texas. And I says, no, I says, I'm probably mistaken. I knew I was right, though. So I wanted to play with him for a bit. And uh, uh, he says, are you, you in the Marines? I said, what, are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I says, Army. He says, uh, where are you from? I says, Holliston, Mass. He says, I used to live there. I says, I know. You dick nest to 50 Pleasant Street. And <laughs> 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 you know this stuff when you're a mailman. I went through these programs, and I finally learned how to use the computer. And uh, <coughs> I had a guy that I was renting to downstairs show me the computer, and um, I found this thing called uh, eBay. Um, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And I got on that, and I would pursue it like I had pursued my, uh, my drinking with a vengeance, and <laughs> I would never win anything. I couldn't understand. Finally, I says, that's it. I'm going all out. I'm going to outbid these people. And uh, my first winning came down the street in an 18-wheel truck. <clears throat> the guy got out and says, where's your loading dock? I says, I don't have a loading dock. <laughs> and I had won 5,500 <coughs> pairs of sunglasses. <laughs> Alcoholics are compulsive people. <laughs> I'd like to say it stopped there. It didn't. I kept going. I won uh, 1,200 pairs of flip-flops, 500 of the cheapest plastic dolls you had ever seen, <laughs> and I was going to do this in my retirement uh, flea markets. And, you know, I haven't... That was many years ago, and I still haven't got rid of the sunglasses, so... I got some flip-flops here. <laughs> Sunglasses. This is the only way I know how to get rid of them, pass them around. <laughs> one, one more. Strange as strange may be, uh, that guy downstairs had helped me learn uh, the computer. Uh, Strange character, moved out from Malden. I couldn't figure out why. He said, oh, my girlfriend lives in Medway. Made perfect sense to me. He, too, had an alcohol problem, unbeknownst to me. He would come up and get his mail, and uh, one day he says, well, I just found out I had a brother. Next day he had another brother. Then he had a sister. And then he came out with a Lulu. He says, uh, I just found out I have a kid. I says, you didn't know these things? <laughs> <laughs> the poor devil uh, will get on and send his resume out on the uh, internet. 
He would lose his job. He finally lost his car because he had no insurance, no registration. Uh, things got too tough for him. Uh, that girlfriend that he impregnated 14 years before caught up with him and wanted 14 years child support and figured that's, that's it, I've had it. Unbeknownst to me, he was gonna kill himself and we have a little arch bridge down in my neighborhood. He was gonna jump off that, uh, put a rope around his neck. He had gone to the local library, um, said sayonara to his friends had gone down to the local hardware store, got the rope, went home, started drinking a little instant courage to do this dastardly deed. And when the time came, he went and grabbed the bag with the rope in it and opened it up and find, found out that instead of buying rope, he had bought a mop head. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a guy from the post office, his mother-in-law sent him down to redo the clothesline, and he did the same thing. <laughs> so he went down to the local Jim Mill Casey's and got hammered for that night. I would learn all this later on when he told me the story of what he had done. And uh, he says, I says, Jesus, I says, weren't you looking when you, no, he says, he says, I figured you had some rope in your shed, he says. And I went out there three different times, and you didn't have any rope. And I said, let me get this straight. You walked out the back door to the shed and back, out the back door to the shed and back, out the back door to the shed. He says, yeah. I says, well, you made six trips, right? He says, yeah. And I says, well, you made six trips under the clothesline. <laughs> Thank you. Chan.